Okay. Well, it's 10.05, so good morning. <laughs> good. I'm glad you can hear me. Uh, this is the CNCF CI Working Group meeting, which is held on once a month on the fourth Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time currently. We do have some colleagues who are on the other side of the globe, and uh, one of the action items out of today's call will be a doodle poll to find the preferred start time for our once a month calls. I've shared the meeting notes in the Zoom chat. We've got our agenda and notes, which have been updated from the group. Thank you. Wow, thanks everybody for joining and contributing to today's CI Working Group call. If you haven't yet added your name to the attendee list, feel free to do so. And I'll start sharing my screen to um, show the meeting notes. We can do a, a little bit of agenda recap. We've switched up the order just a bit due to limited availability, uh, but otherwise I think we'll have a full hour. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yep, I can. Great. Thank you so much. Cool. So we'll do a quick recap of the CrossCloud CI project. Uh, then we have an update for from OPNFV XCI and how we can work together on ONAP projects. We'll have an update from Packet and an update from VMware. We will um, then have an update from Oracle Cloud and meet the team who will be adding Oracle Platform to cncf.ci. And uh, Watson then will follow up with an overview of cross CD definitions. And there's a link in the doc just in case we don't get to that topic at the end of the hour. Okay, Taylor, are you ready? I will share my screen with the slides. I'm ready and I'm able to share my screen if that'd be helpful as well. I think we've got it. Okay, great. Is my audio coming through okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, cross cloud CI project. Um, we do have a, the first um, slide five there is just why we were originally here, what we're trying to do. Um, this is regarding collaboration and, and integration between all the projects, CNCF and trying to build um, the software and platform that would be usable um, for showing the integration between those projects and how they can be deployed and um, used across multiple cloud providers. And then um, focusing on making it possible for software outside of CNCF. You can go to slide six. So that was, original goal that um, we had when we started, and that's the CI platform, which we completed the underlaying, and that ties in with uh, the cross-cloud Kubernetes deployer, which we'll talk about for VMware and stuff. The status repository and dashboard um, for displaying the results from the platform. So these are built as individual components so they can fit together. And then integrating with external CI systems. So started with the internal CI system, one to make sure that we could work with others. And the first one was the ONAP. 
at slide six, seven, sorry. So um, some of the projects um, fo focusing on trying to build, um, be able to add those working on making it possible for the community to contribute and maintain those um, core DNS, Prometheus, uh, some of those that we have right now. And then slide eight, this was a pretty big deal as far as the project making it easier to add external projects. So ONAP, um, doing an integration with their CI system um, helped us expand and make the system more portable outside of the original CI platform, um, GitLab and other components. Slide nine. So we have AWS, Google Cloud, OpenStack, Azure, IBM, Packet, soon to be VMware, and hopefully Oracle. Here's the current dashboard with Kubernetes um, deploying across the different clouds at the top. Go to slide 11. We build all of the projects from source um, where, we, where we're using the internal CI system. So that's Kubernetes on the master head release as well as whatever the latest stable is. And then the same thing for the different projects that are gonna be deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, for ONAP, we actually don't build, we um, use the upstream. And then we deploy Kubernetes to each of the cloud, set up the clusters for stable and head release, and deploy all of the apps to Kubernetes with Helm, and run the end-to-end -end test. So quick overview. Right now, the underlying um, platform that we're using for running the different um, software pieces is GitLab. This could be on top of various things. We're using the registry, uh, container registry, and other things in GitLab as well. Um, at the moment, Terraform, Cloud in it, some of the things we're using. Um, and we are using KubeTest for Kubernetes, bringing that up because of potentially moving away from that. And then Helm, try to use upstream Helm charts as much as possible. And if needed, then we'll fork those and try to contribute any changes. Um, like the ONAP um, side, we worked with them when they were focused on getting the new release of ONAP um, ready and deploying on onto Kubernetes. So we worked with some early versions of that and helped contribute any changes. Okay. Some of the dashboard technology. <clears throat> and there's been some questions on using some of that. Um, if we uh, haven't put a lot of docs out there, but we're trying to make those available. I know Melvin was asking about that. Uh, slide 16. So um, we're continuing to maintain and um, just most of this is updating to support new versions of various software. Um, anything like CoreOS, uh, updates for GCE, requirements for what's available, those sort of things at the moment. Um, that's been a lot of the focus is the maintenance. Slide 17. So the Major development we've had right now is on the clouds side. So thanks um, folks for helping on the VMware integration. We do have the one, uh, pool 150 was merged. We saw a few things um, that we needed to update. Andrew, you've turned around and contributed uh, the new pull request 153. Appreciate it. So we're hoping to have VMware pretty soon through testing and up and live, and then Oracle integration coming uh, hopefully next. So we plan to keep adding cloud support for the cross-cloud uh, provisioner, 
and however that works in the dashboard visualization. What we're looking at next is what, what do we want to do for 2.0 and what's going to be valuable for the community? Um, what can we change, whether it's dashboard, how the status repository can be utilized, what we're testing. So we're looking at stuff like Sonoboy, uh, moving away from cube test to Sonoboy, which is, um, seems to be the de facto at this point, um, potentially using CubeADM um, for some of the cluster bring up. We're working with the cluster lifecycle um, SIG and some of the other groups on the Kubernetes to see where that should go. Maybe using Ignition rather than Cloud in it, specifically for CoreOS, since that's um, now uh, going to be the only choice in that place and seeing what we can do there. Harbor might be something that we um, end up using for a container registry. So looking at these sort of things, we'd also like to get um, feedback for where to go and what would be useful community-wise. Some of the things that we were looking at before would be the automation, the API history. So this is the actual status repository making it available. So. And um, we are working with the network service mesh folks over on the networking, um, that's the CNCF networking working group and some other groups and looking at how the different pieces of software can be useful there and then taking the feedback to roll back into the cross cloud CI project itself. So we welcome any feedback so we can see um, where we're gonna go um, with V2O and if y'all have that, then please um, join us in these groups, um, the mailing list on Slack love to get feedback um, so that we can see where to go next. And that's it for CrossCode CI. Um, uh, the, the one piece of feedback I have, Taylor, and uh, mm -hmm. I can file an issue or however you want to handle this. Okay. I, the, a topic's been raised a few times to me with regards to the dashboard. Hopefully, you know, VMware will show up there soon, but um, I've had some questions. Well, you know, what does it mean when it goes red? And certainly we've seen it go red for reasons beyond the control of the platform. And, you know, as I mentioned to somebody, like unless our platform is down, most likely if it's red, it, it's not something in our control. And, uh, but the, the, the way it looks, however, can be misleading. So maybe something with the dashboard that you know, things are red, if we hover over it or there's some, you know, inserted element that indicates that, you know, if it's a platform specific error or not, and I don't know how you might necessarily detect that, but like I said, I've seen it go red and it has nothing to do with the, the platform, but somebody looking at it might think that VMware is broken. And I, I think that, you know, obviously there are people eager to participate in this, we're eager to participate in this. At the same time, I think we want to make sure that if something looks broken, it, it's clear why. Um, that's great feedback. I think I summarized in the Zoom chat there. So what does it mean to go red? Um, is this a cloud provider issue? Is this a build deploy issue? Where is it? Uh, definitely something that we've been looking at. Um, how do we do that? Some of those things are going to come down to the specifics and the error messages, which um, can yeah. be easy for maybe a human to quickly see, much harder to automate as far as um, finding from programmatic and showing and say a, a pop-up or um, some type of mouse over whether you go to another screen, whatever that is. Um, we are slowly adding 
those pieces as we're going along, but something that we're, we've thought about, how, how can we do this more as a overall general? But thanks. Yeah, yeah I mean, one, one way that I could conceivably think to do something would be uh, like a stoplight, insert yellow, and if you can connect to the cluster instead of uh, red, maybe mark it yellow to, or to indicate that the cluster is healthy. Uh, yeah. Like a, a few weeks ago, I saw it looked like some bad uh, data, some bad data got inserted into an, an environment file at the build system. The build completed, but now bad environment file was corrupting all of the platform deploys. But the clusters were still up, and I think you know at that point the provider has done its job. I hate using that phrase with respect yeah. to but yeah, something like that. Yeah, I totally understand. I think I know which one you're referring to, and it's, um, it's actually something where we could probably stop moving forward, so it's before you get to that. Um, this would have to do with some early plans that we had, potentially showing here was the last successful build or deploy or whatever it is. It, anyways, um, let's carry on maybe if you want to open a ticket with ideas or catch me on slack we can continue with some of those um and again love to hear feedback from other folks on what would be useful especially to the whole community hand it over um i guess fat fatty do you want to yeah. are you available yeah so this will be a quick update from OPNF uh, side regarding what we are doing with ONAP integration and then relation to OpenCI. So uh, OPNF is one of the Linux Foundation networking umbrella projects, which basically does uh, system integration and testing by bringing different uh, open source technologies together like OpenStack, Kubernetes, OpenDaylight, ONAP, and so on. And it is pretty like, Similar to cross cloud CI, OpenNF cross community CI also does cross community CI, but as opposed to what cross cloud CI is doing, uh, OpenNF does everything on bare metal mostly because OpenNF generally deals with uh, telco specific use cases and benchmarking and performance uh, characteristics. They are uh, important and they need to be verified on production like environment. And uh, since the day one, we have been doing this type of uh, cross-community integration. And over time, we uh, decided to move forward faster by uh, bringing different technologies from master branches trunk, like how cross-class CI is doing. And thanks to Open Data community and Daniel Farrell, who is with us today, we got lots of input from Open Daylight community, and we basically tried copying, or we started copying their uh, practices they uh, employ in their continuous delivery pipelines. And based on those practices, we started bringing Open Daylight from trunk into Open IFA environment and started integrating Open uh, Open Daylight with OpenStack. And this opened up new opportunities. And one of the uh, projects we want to start working with is ONAP because ONAP is pretty important in networking world and it basically provides management and orchestration for network functions, virtualization, uh, VNFs and plat uh, physical network functions. And when we started working with ONAP uh, community and start looking at how we can bring these things together to OPNFV uh, infrastructure, we found out that you are already doing this in cross-cloud CI. And then we start talking about like how can we do similar things and ensure that we can bring on up into uh, cross community CI by again following practices set by other communities such as CNCF cross class CI. And this actually made some of the things we have been struggling with pretty obvious, which we realized that those things, those use cases we have in OPN XCI might be common across different communities such as CNC. For example, the basic thing, how can we bring in artifacts from ONAP into cross-class CI or cross-community CI in a similar way we are doing with open daylight artifacts. And this brings us to an obvious need that it would be 
important for us or PNC, CNCF or other communities who might need to reach out to ONAP community and get the uh, needs we have implemented there. And instead of reaching out to ONAP community ourselves alone, it might make sense for us to collect, uh, try to collect the requirements on our site within CNCF cross class CI or OpenFV XCI or perhaps even Open Lab and find commonalities between these different requirements and use cases and then reach out to ONAP community one voice so they don't have to deal with multiple communities and they don't get confused and we don't waste their time and our time so we can get things done much faster. And that is actually the second bullet point, like how can we find out synergies that are coming up with common requirements to our community? And that is something I want to highlight to CNCF and cross class CI team that how can we uh, start collecting these requirements? And this brings us to OpenCI, which is a new initiative kind of community forming, uh, started forming recently. And we are talking about similar concerns or practices as part of OpenCI to establish cross-community CI even within wider open source ecosystem. For example, OpenStack, CNCF, OpenDaylight, Fido, ONAP, OpenFE, Linux Foundation, Ansible, and so on. And if we can set an example between ourselves to bring up common requirements and use cases from CNCF, OpenFE communities, we can connect this to OpenCI high level themes when it comes cross community CI and then make this type of approach a common practice from OpenCI. And if some other communities need to reach out to other communities, based on similar needs, they can look at what we have tried, what we have, haven't been able to achieve and what we have achieved. So we can set some kind of uh, blueprint there when it comes to how to tackle these common integration challenges across different open source communities. And the second part of this, okay, it's all good that we can start an Interpad or Google Doc document to collect these requirements, but we also need to make things real. So we have a progress in parallel to thinking or talking about the problems. And again, as part of OpenCI, we start the prototype, which we have the link to that document on the slide. Within Open Daylight, between Open Daylight on up and OpenFE to try out some ideas like using event-driven CI to get the CI systems talking to each other so they can basically pass the information regarding whatever they have been doing in their CI CD systems, such as building artifacts, testing them, proving certain versions of artifacts are good enough for other communities to consume. And then that information can be used for other CI CD systems to fetch those artifacts and do further test integration and testing. If we need to put this in CNCF cross class CI context, which basically which might make your lives easier if ONAP starts publishing events when they uh, create new artifacts, so you don't have to go and parse their logs and so on. And this is something I already asked to Tyler, Lucina, Watson, and other cross-class CI folks that, like, what do you need to get from ONAP CI? What information is important for cross-class CI to function and bring ONAP on uh, your CI infrastructure or your CI system. And we collected some requirements from there. And we also have some requirements in OPNV side. And we put those requirements on top of the existing example requirements coming out from this prototype document on the uh, Google Docs. And based on these things, we started this prototype and the basic hello world type of thing we made it working between ONAP, Open Data and OPNFE. And Yolanda was part of this work and Daniel was part of this work as well. And I think we are in a stage that we think we should start working on some kind of better structured message types. The message types you will see in this document are just basic message types to demonstrate the idea. And since we haven't received any negative feedback or disagreement regarding this proposal, we decided to 
work and come up with second iteration of message types based on the message types we determined on this document. Basically, artifact published event, composition created event, and confidence level modified event, which you can read the details. And then we will uh, share this once we have it ready with OpenCI community, with CNCF, cross-class CI, with OpenWeb, and with others who are involved in OpenCI and interested in this type of solution, and then collect further feedback to see if this is the viable, if this is a viable solution to tackle some of the challenges we have in cross-community integration. And then now I need to pass the word to Yolanda because she has been uh, working on uh, this uh, message publishing and message messaging protocol so she can give updates. Thanks. Okay, so well, mostly it's what everything, what Fatih explained in there. We started with the idea that we want to broadcast events from one CI system to another. And then we want to be able for systems to just consume those events. So the idea is that we need to have a, just a common uh, schema of the messages that you want to, to consume, also a common set of types. And based on that, you can, doesn't matter what, what is your CI, if it's a Jenkins rule or GitHub, wherever, you can just uh, receive the events we started uh, for the prototype we started to just publish the events on uh, ActiveMQ so it's just a, a CI that publicly just publishes the events there and any CI that is interested just can consume it uh, so we started uh, to work on a prototype uh, with Jenkins using a plugin that is called GMS messaging plugin uh, let me paste in the chat Uh, so that's what we use uh, to just do a proof of concept between Open Daylight and OpenFV. So there was the one CI just uh, posting those events using, uh, we had an active MQ there and we just were just posting these events and then the other CI was interested in consuming those and then based on that we were launching new jobs. And after this initial idea, what we are doing is that we are working on a, a publisher of our own uh, that will allow us to, to be more active or in validation of the messages and have be able to provide a, a common messaging system forever for all the ones that we, we need to use that want to use it. So let me paste again that. We started to work on this project that is going to do the same. It's just going to, to accept a, a set of, of parameters that you are producing with your CI. And you are going to pass uh, the, the target where you want to publish it. And then it will just publish it in a common schema, allowing other CIs to consume it. So this is just a very basic system. What we are really interested on is just on defining the, the structure of it because yeah, we, we define it like three types of, of events. So the, um, we had the, the artifact level change it. Uh, so just a second. So, okay. uh, so well, three different types. Uh, we, we have an artifact published event that is when we are, the system is creating a new, a new artifact, like producing a table, a package, whatever. So any other CIs that are interested in consuming that can just get it. Also, we have uh, one that is called confidence level modified. I mean, when you are passing like some tests, you are passing unit testing, integration testing, whatever, you can publish your results there. So you can check if you can just count uh, that this, this artifact is okay or not. And then we have another that is called composition defined event that is just a set of nested artifacts. So when you publish some release, you have a, a set of artifacts. What you, do, uh, what you are doing now is just nesting everything of that. So we came with these three types of events and then inside these three types of events, we are having a, like common, common fields like version, like the URL. And then you can have a set of individual, individual fields. So that's what we are interested in defining now. Uh, okay, let me pass the in the chat what we are working on now 
is that I mean, I'm not sure you, you can see the, the chat here, uh, the, the link to the Etherpad. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we, we came for, uh, with. So we will have like meta, meta fields that will be common to all kind, all types of events. And then we ha can have data that will, will be particular fields for each type of the event. So in meta, we just are, say, are saying what type are we having here, any ID to just be aware of the, the event that you consume it. Uh, okay, yeah, some version as well, some data time to just for tracking the, the events that you are consuming. And then you, you can have like data that are the specific fields for each type. For example, when you are publishing an artifact, you can have a, an item that is called locations and then you can publish there all the, um, the URLs that you have created when you publish your artifacts. You can just embed it here and then the external CI that is interested in consuming that will just have the, the URLs to consume it. And so that we are on this now. Uh, we were interested on just having your feedback there and see what do you think about the types of events that we define it. Do you need more events? any field that needs to be included there. So, I mean, the, the publisher is done very flexible. So once we define the schema, uh, we can use the publisher and we can just do the integration between the different CIs. But what's important for now, uh, for us now, is just to arrive on an agreement and to see what kind of schema do you want to see there, okay? So that's what I wanted to show. Thank you. And what is the best way um, to provide feedback or where is the best place to provide feedback? Okay. So, I mean, Google Doc can be fine or this, this same Etherpad, also a mailing list. Uh, we have a mailing list for OpenCI. So maybe just providing feedback there or I mean, initially for just having, adding some comments on this Etherpad can be good as well. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Any uh, questions or feedback before we move on to the next topic? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor, for posting the OpenCI mailing list as well. Great. Uh, next on our agenda, we've got uh, packet updates and then VMware updates and Oracle Cloud updates. So we have about 22 minutes. Uh, we may need to time box for the remaining, if possible, maybe eight minutes per topic, if possible. <laughs> So, you know, VMware can give up most of it. So, I mean, uh, I, can, I can do that in 30 seconds. So please distribute that to others. Thank you, Andrew. And I'll do mine in five. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Okay, next slide. So cross-cut provisioning on bare metal at Packet. Um, CNCF currently uses Packet uh, to do bare metal provisioning. The current setup uh, specifies a particular data center in which to run the tests. The machines are spun up, um, the tests are run, the machines are torn down. Um, we are in the midst of, and I had hoped to have a uh, documentation for this, but I'll, I'll send it separately once, it's, once the release notes are out. Uh, the availability of a publishing step, a provisioning step so that the CNCF can provision in any qualifying facility rather than a specific uh, facility. Uh, this was designed in part uh, with the CrossCloud CI in mind so that if any of our facilities uh, in some sort of priority order has the available capacity for as many machines as are needed, um, that we can avoid temporary capacity issues by relocating to a different data center. 
Um, as I say, we're working on external documentation and integration with provisioning tools. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible to integrate, uh, but still, still finishing this up. Um, the, uh, it's, this basically uh, replaces a uh, manual process with a uh, automated process, so that should be good. Next slide. So one of the things that we have uh, ambitions for, uh, but is not yet on the schedule, is cross-cloud CI using the ARM64 hardware that's a packet. Um, our c1.large.arm system type is a Cavium Thunder X system. And uh, we have uh, inventory of them that uh, may be growing over the next uh, three to six months. So one of the things I'm looking for is uh, opportunities to deploy part of that fleet to have use uh, for cross-cloud CI for ARM64 um, at packet, similar to the bare metal infrastructure. So most of the bare metal uh, setup will be identical. It's just that uh, we're looking at the software support. Uh, largely the lead on this on the CNCF side has been Hippie Hacker. Um, typical issues that we need to overcome. Um, registry support, uh, there's a, a multi-architecture manifest that is used to support um, multiple machine types in a single manifest so that you can do something like uh, pull Ubuntu and get the right Ubuntu for your system. Not every single registry supports this, but we're working closely with people who are doing registry builds to make sure that they support all that. Um, once the registry is taken care of, uh, packages need to also have multi-architecture support. Um, this is partly uh, porting things and partly tooling. Actually, it's mostly tooling. Usually, usually the ports are very small. But tooling up people's uh, CI, CD systems so that they generate ARM64 uh, artifacts that are appropriately tagged and uh, registered in uh, the registries. Um, and then uh, what's always a question, I think there's a question came up uh, in, the, in the notes, um, how does one test all this? So I work on the Works on ARM project, which is funded by ARM, uh, which provides uh, both CI-CD infrastructure and test infrastructure and development infrastructure for people doing ports or, um, or builds on 64-bit ARM. We currently have a bare metal infrastructure for that on these same machines. Uh, we are actively investigating what it would take to stand up a little OpenStack cluster so that if people didn't need a whole machine for a long time, but just needed a VM, that we could provide some kind of VM infrastructure, uh, primarily in the test, uh, test piece of the world and uh, actively working on that as well. And I'll drop in the, um, If you're interested in getting access to our cluster, um, there's uh, information at that URL. Uh, we manage a pro the project through GitHub. Uh, essentially, you open an issue on GitHub and uh, describe your needs, and we're prepared to uh, work with you to get resources for 64-bit ARM uh, ports, builds, and um, and uh, if you need some, if you need uh, long-term access for CICD benchmarking, testing, whatnot, that we can provide that as well. You know, within reason, the, the uh, pool of hardware is finite, uh, hopefully growing, uh, but I don't want to announce any growth until it shows up in my inventory screens. And that's it for now. Questions? Hearing no one, we'll turn it over to VMware. Thanks, Ed. Uh, that's really interesting. So real quick updates, we submitted a PR to add uh, platform support to the cross-cloud dashboard that was merged last night. There was a bug that was encountered that I submitted a PR for this morning and I tested, it looks good, but Taylor will have to verify. And uh, the last thing, uh, I didn't necessarily intend to, to mention it, but um, you know, Ed you mentioned something similar. We are also working on making the environment we stood up for cross-cloud available to others eventually. Um, we're involved in SIG testing 
uh, to use the environment to provide end-to-end -end tests for uh, Kubernetes um, as part of our own prot instance or integrating with their existing prot instance. But the goal is eventually to be able to leverage this uh, environment to provide uh, what, I, what I've called on-prem in the cloud, as horrible as that sounds, but to provide real, end quotes, hardware to people that need to run tests against Kubernetes with the hardware configurations may be unlikely to find on places like Amazon or, or Google. So um, stay tuned for more of that, and, and that will be more uh, with, you know, that, that initiative is uh, more aligned with SIG testing, but I raised it just because, you know, Ed mentioned something that was very similar. Um, so yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I raised this topic. Um, I am interested in submitting a KubeCon CFP for adding platforms to CNCF CrossCloud. Um, and I'm interested in seeing if anyone wants to co be listed as a co-presenter or submit it with me. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we just went through this experience for adding a platform to CrossCloud and there are a few gotchas here and there. I mean, without Lucina and Taylor and Denver's help and, and my colleague Hui it would have never happened uh, and I want to be able to both capture that but also to try to make it easier for people in the future and I know OpenStack you added yours um, it, you know and we used yours as a reference and so if if anyone from there is interested anyone from bulk is interested please contact me it's uh, I'll put my email address is in the agenda notes just shoot me an email and I think that's it for VMware Thank you. Hey, so am I coming through okay? Good morning, yes. Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, my name's Dustin Oberlo. Uh, I'm an engineer over here at Oracle um, under the uh, Oracle Cloud Group. And uh, we're, uh, I just sort of wanted to introduce myself and my colleague, Ben. Um, we're going to hopefully be one of the, the next providers to, uh, to integrate with CrossCloud and uh, hopefully get Kubernetes um, provisioning using the services that you guys have. Um, yeah, that, that's really all I had. Uh, you're gonna see me probably in Slack quite a bit. Um, and it sounds like first steps are, are to, to reference some of the most recent providers that have, have come in and, uh, and go from there. So um, I appreciate uh, in advance your, your patience with, uh, with any questions that I might have and, and uh, uh, any help that you might be providing me. <laughs> so that's that's it for me, I think. Yeah, Thanks, Dustin. Uh, yeah, I'd like to introduce myself to um, I'm Ben, like as Dustin said, um, we'll be having a lot of questions asked either through email on the, uh, the Git project or through Slack. So uh, I'm happy you guys are welcoming us. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot from us soon. Great. Good morning. It's good to meet you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And thanks, Melvin. Yes, uh, Melvin and Chris Hodge um, were in charge of the OpenStack integration. So we've got plenty of folks on this call alone who have uh, been in the code and added their platform to the crosscloud cncf.ci. So you're in you're a friendly company. Looking forward to it. And we're doing great on time. We still have about 10 minutes. Um, so I'll pass it over to Watson for the overview of cross CD definitions. Okay. Let's see here. Can you bring up the, uh, the doc there? Cool. So this, this doc came from some of the, the early open uh, CI uh, conference meetups and everything where one of the uh, action items was 
um, to try to understand some of these definitions. We we all had different definitions within the CI and CD space. So I just went ahead and went to the continuous delivery book, and I just recommend that we just use the definitions that they have within that book by you know, Jess Humble um, for all of our definitions, which are going to or should influence the actual messages that we have for the um, the, the messaging uh, protocol that we were seeing earlier. So um, here, I guess uh, I, I went through and just did just the continuous delivery side because it was a bit uh, easier. There's low hanging fruit there. And within CI, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And I, I think, you know, we can go through and maybe grab from the continuous integration book some definitions there, but there's some overlap here. But artifacts, that was uh, a problem, um, how to define that and what, what is it that we call an artifact, um, whether it be a container or whatever, um, environments, configuration, what exactly is configuration, and then what is a pipeline, and coming in and defining the actual stages of a pipeline, um, I think will go a long way to informing and influencing our messaging system or protocol. Um, so the, the link is here, we can go through it, or I, I recommend uh, anyone to go through it and add in their comments. These are all lifted directly from the book. So we can um, debate it and maybe even say, when you contact the author, I know, I think Jess Humble is, a, is um, some, some people here might know him, so um, we could probably get him to come in and comment on some things. But if I think if we get through these definitions, then we can get through this protocol and then we can have all of our different CI systems and CD systems actually working together because we can get the protocol going. So that's really all I wanted to, to go over here. Thanks, Watson. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, I'd like to just throw a comment or two around context of OpenCI for those who are not familiar. So um, part of this document that Watson has been working on, um, it's really about, so the, the hope is to kind of, a, in OpenCI, um, present some, some type of standardization or common um, vocabulary, common context, common protocols, et cetera, that not necessarily the individual CI, CD projects um, or, or platforms directly adhere to internally, but as it relates to them discussing or talking across communities, um, folks who are participating are agreeing that, you know, they want to come up with some kind of commonality so that as things transfer, as, as you integrate, you know, across a community, you may do a whole lot of things differently internally, but this is the expectation of interfaces across communities um, and people are agreeing to adhere to them to make that, you know, cross integration easier. I, I see Hippie Hacker is involved, of course. He's got his tendrils and everything. So that means SIG testing is definitely aware of it. I just hadn't heard it brought up yet. I've, I've only been attending those meetings for a month or so, but yeah, it looks interesting. There's been kind of an experiment more or less, but we, we think we've got some good traction with the past few events that have happened. And so uh, July 2nd, I believe the meeting is in the uh, notes for this meeting um, to basically kind of get some of this stuff out in the open more and and start people talking about it. So hopefully you'll hear, hear more by that time or afterwards. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any other topics, topics for consideration before we 
and go through the final three slides. I just wanted to put a bug in that some everybody's here for the for the next meeting potentially. I know that the suggesting is uh, they were discussing moving the singular prowl instance to the CNCF at some point. I'm kind of curious, you know, what the I'd be interested in sort of an overview between the relationship between CNCF CI and SIG testing and what relocating that prowl instance means for whose responsibilities moving forward and how it might impact uh, the cross cloud dashboard, you know, maybe one learns from the other or vice versa. Just if there are any plans for that, maybe that's been discussed recently, but as sort of a newbie, it would be nice to at least have some, if there's a document that points to that, that'd be useful. This is Taylor. Um, I'll speak to that real quick and then happy to discuss more after. Um, we've the cross cloud CI project. Uh, we've we've been collaborating with SIG testing with the conformance working group and quite a few different ones. There seems to be different audiences as the main focus in the different groups. So trying to um, bridge those gaps. A, a lot of what the dashboard um, was trying to do was show, highlight some of the um, the collaboration across the groups and what the testing could be. And that's part of what V2 would be about, seeing what would be most useful. Um, the testing SIG has a uh, done a lot of updates on this, uh, Kubernetes SIG testing, has done a lot of work on the dashboard. It still has its own audience focus, but we're trying to figure out where everything is going to go. <laughs> um, also, the cluster lifecycle and cluster API groups would be some other areas where there's overlap there. Yeah, the cluster API keeps coming up in several email threads that, that on, on which I'm I'm listed. And someone even asked, "Yeah, yeah. why are you, should you be using the cluster API for this PR? I'm like, even if it existed, not until Volk changes their settings, we're using what they use." But yeah, it keeps it keeps being raised. And we attend those. In fact, there's one coming up in two minutes. One of the the cluster lifecycle, and then there's a cluster API call on Wednesday as well. So a lot of different work um, across the board and trying to see where it lands. A lot of what the cross cloud CI is doing is trying to say what is available fully right now uh, versus what is in development and maybe the next thing. I think that's it for today. Um, you want to yes, close sir. out, Lucina? Sounds good. Um, these meetings are once a month, fourth Tuesday of the month. They typically start at 8 a.m. Pacific time. We had a doodle vote out to adjust the start time um, so that it's a little nicer for our friends in New Zealand. I will do another one for July 24th and send that out to the CI mailing list. So some ways to continue the conversation um, after and in between the CI working group meetings is to subscribe to the CNCF CI public mailing list. Um, it's not very chatty at all, but feel free to join and uh, post, post your notes there. And you're also welcome to join the CNCF-CI channel on Slack. To request an invite, go to slack.cncf.io. Um, yes. <laughs> and is that also the know. Slack where open CI is discussed or is that a separate? Open CI, I believe, is not on Slack. I think there's a different tool. Perhaps Melvin can speak to that. Yeah, sorry, I was just typing in the, it's in the IRC only right now and hash OpenCI. Gotcha.
Melvin, is that on Freenode? Yes, yeah, sorry, Freenode. <laughs> Apologies. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everyone. It was nice to meet everyone, hear your voices, and we look forward to collaborating with you in the future. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you, everybody.